Hey yo, what's up? It would welcome back to another reaction video. It's your boy Jesse Keegan and your girl Fanny Longo. And we are Fanny and Jesse. So right about now we're gonna do another reaction video. But before we even get started, I'm back again and yeah, we're gonna do it as we normally do it. So anyway guys, I wanna thank you so much for subscribing, guys. It's super amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you also for just supporting her whenever she just, you know, does videos and whatnot. You guys have been so kind. And yeah. I've been busy. I've been doing one or two things here and there. Uh, sometimes I don't have to be here, but I have to come here and support her and whatnot. So, without any further ado, guys, today we're going to react to a reaction uh, video right here. And this one was suggested by one of the guys in the comment section below. It was a guy who was saying that, why do I always say someone uh, like I saw that. suggested or whatever thing? But uh, sometimes I feel like we should put the names there. For the people who actually suggested, but, but sometimes I feel edits, like, yeah, so. she's the one who did it. So, uh, it's, I, I don't know. It's just hard for her to just put those things in together. Excuse you. <laughs> so anyway, guys, today we're gonna do another Russian video, and this one was suggested by, of course, somebody in the comment section below, and this suggests that we should go react to Prophet Muhammad, marriage to Aisha. This is by Yusuf Istes or something like that. So without any further ado, guys, let's get. It. Check this out. Welcome to the mailbag on the Dean Show. I'm Yusuf Estes, and for the next few minutes, we'd like to talk about some of the mail that we receive here on a regular basis. Some of the letters that we receive from you are very stimulating and cause us to reflect and go back to the sources of Islam so that we're able to determine exactly what the answer to these questions are. I received one today that is actually representative of a lot of the emails that we get talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his marriage to his wife Aisha. They're concerned often in these uh, letters and emails to us about the age of Aisha, and they're asking us, for instance, in this case, we'd like to know is it true that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, married his wife Aisha when she was a child? And if so, what does this mean and how do we understand that about child brides in Islam? The questioner goes on, but it seems to continue in this same way. What we want to begin with is to tell you that Islam is always about rights and limits. Never is it permissible in Islam to take advantage of anybody else. One over another is not acceptable in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, has told us clearly that he does not oppress and he hates it when we oppress and he forbids, forbids humans to oppress each other. So if you're imagining some form of oppression going on here, you can put your mind at ease. This is not the case. Let us now investigate what was the condition of the people and what were their traditions and customs at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The Arabs of the Arabian Peninsula in those days used to marry a girl at any age. There was no limit on it because it wasn't about their sexual intercourse or something like this. It was about establishing the right of marriage of a man getting to marry a girl and marrying into a family. Often it was about tribalism, and there was little, if any, stipulation that the girl had any say-so or any rights. As a matter of fact, that was the last and the least of their considerations of whether or not the woman had anything to say about the matter. Additionally, in those days, it was considered a shame on a family if they had a child that was a girl born to them. So the men would actually take some of, some of the men would take these little girls when they were born, newborn babies, into the desert and bury them alive and leave them. That was considered the manly, manly thing to do. And when a child was orphaned, let's say there was a little girl or father passed away or parents died, then a man could come along and claim that little girl and say, I'm going to marry this girl and take all the wealth that goes along, you know, that she would inherit. Additionally, uh, people would take the wealth of children, boys or girls, and mix it with their own money and claim they were improving the condition for the child until they were old enough to make decisions for themselves. 
and obviously benefiting themselves by this mingling of funds. So when Islam came, it did come in stages. It wasn't all at once that everybody just had to drop everything and do all these commandments, but it did come, first of all, to recognize that it is God who has the authority over man. And this was the Tawheed or the monotheism that was so much uh, influential throughout the teaching of Muhammad, peace be upon him. And here he was now saying that it's God's authority showing you how to behave, especially in, in this idea of being married. So there's a chapter now in the Quran about women. It's not the only place in the Quran you find about dealing with women, not at all. But for sure, if you want to look quickly and find a, an issue, marriage, the treatment of women, wives in general, wives specifically, and then divorce. You can find a lot of this in this same chapter. But now about divorce, we do have another chapter for that. But what we're going to focus on now is about this issue of age of Aisha. So in chapter 4, the women, the one I'm talking about, you go to verse number 19, and it says, O you who believe, you cannot inherit women against their will, meaning that you cannot take from them their inheritance, and meaning also that you cannot marry them without their permission or their consent, and they have to be old enough for the age of consent. This is very clear. A man could not marry a girl. He could only marry a woman. A woman meaning that she's old enough to have children and old enough and mature enough in her mind to make the, these kinds of decisions. <clears throat> now let us turn to the subject at hand. We're talking about the age now of Aisha. Only Aisha herself is telling us about this. She is telling us, for in her own words, what her age was when her mother came to her and she was playing outside, playing outside in the dirt with her toys or whatever, her mother comes to her and says, come in the house. She was six years old. Mother takes her into the house to see her father. Her father is there offering her hand in marriage now to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, offering the hand of his daughter to the Prophet, who is his best friend, and this was a custom, a tradition in their society. So it was definitely well within the uh, limits of the society they lived in. It was approved totally. But look at this. It wasn't accepted by Muhammad. How do we know? How do we know? Well, because if you keep reading, you'll see that she went back outside and continued playing. And this is to indicate what? That although this is very much appreciated, and accepted in, at least in intention. Yet, because the girl's not old enough yet, she must be the one to decide. That's why you find another hadith or saying or tradition in the same book of Bukhari that says a different age. Well, you might wonder, well, how is it six years old or is it nine years old? Maybe they turned the number upside down. You know, a six and a nine, you could reverse it. But that's not possible in the Arabic because when you see the number nine in Arabic, you see the number six, they're not the same as they are with the English letters we use today. So that wasn't the case, not at all. In fact, she says a similar incident takes place on another occasion. Again, her mother's taking her inside and offering her hand in marriage. The father is offering the hand in marriage to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And it is in this time, now she's older and she's uh, evidently now able to make the decision. But in any case, they did not have any marriage until she gave consent. And she had to be old enough or they couldn't have done it. So that's number one. Put your mind at ease about that. Number two is that even when they got married, she didn't go to live with him until she was old enough to have babies. That's also a condition and understanding of an Islam. This doesn't happen. And even then, he took his time with her. And that she said herself, listen to this, that they used to run and play and enjoy being together. And she used to beat him in the races, she said, until she got older. When she got fatter, she said, and then he used to beat her in the races. She talks about having a lot of fun together and 
growing and, and enjoying his company, being with him, and they grew in their mutual love and respect for each other very much. In her whole life, she never said any disparaging remarks against her husband. It was only the most glowing of report that comes from her about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Although he died while she was still a young lady, she continued throughout her life, the rest of her life, with full honor and respect for her husband. She never remarried. She never had any boyfriends or callers coming by or any of the rest of it. She became also one of the greatest of the scholars, especially in the area of telling us about women's needs and women's conditions and the things that Islam is providing for women. We know a lot about the case of women in Islam from Aisha. Radiallahu anha, may Allah be pleased with her. Additionally, I would like to mention that when you consider how much he loved her, that when he was dying, he asked to be with her. He wanted to be with her. And he made a point to be there. And she would come in and put the towel on his head when he had such a fever, and she would try to cool him down. And then he would take it off, and he would talk for a minute, and then put it back on. And this is recorded in some of the sayings also of Muhammad. And then when he passed away, he passed away with his head in her lap. Now this shows a great love from both of them. Yet she didn't wail and cry and tear at her hair or any of the rest of it, which was a custom, by the way, of the ignorant pagan people. Instead, she understood that he was going to his Lord. She also understood throughout the rest of her life that she also would go to her Lord and that they would be together again in paradise, living happily ever after. I'd like you now to contrast this story that I've just told you with the story of Romeo and Juliet, the story that we usually associate with Valentine's Day, the story that we usually associate with true love and young love. But in reality, the story that Shakespeare presents for us is no match for the beautiful story that I've just told you. Because those children, and they were children, they were very young teenagers, perhaps 12, 14 years old, Romeo and Juliet. They were going against the wishes of their parents and sneaking behind their back. And they were not married. There was no marriage involved. It was just an affair that they were having. And then one committed suicide and then the other followed. So this is the tragic result of the kind of love that's not acceptable in Islam. There is no boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, and there's certainly no sneaking behind the backs of the parents. Everything in Islam is out in the open, and everything in marriage is done by contract, and there's never any sex before marriage. So put it in perspective and understand that this is the story that Shakespeare probably wishes that he would have told instead of Romeo and Juliet. I hope this was able in some way to put your mind at ease and relax about this subject because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was in fact sent as a mercy to all of the mankind and jinn. Until next time, from here on the mailbag, on the Dean Show, peace. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. What do you have to say about the whole thing? It's interesting. This is actually one thing that I've had a problem with. Uh -huh. This marriage. I agree with the good deeds that he did. If they had a happy marriage, I don't mind. Everything else I appreciate, I admire. And I think there's more to Islam than just focusing on these characters that I admire, that I would love to learn about or actually incorporate in life. But when it comes to this story, if you compare it to Romeo and Juliet, I think both are bad to some extent. But then this is what about Romeo and Juliet. Um, we have to understand that we're in a different time. And even among us Africans, at some point, our ancestors were marrying people that were young, ladies that were young, and it's still happening. 
especially maybe in villages and whatever the situation is people actually plan for these things they say we're keeping this child for this month and this man comes and does whatever they want do you understand should we judge them i don't they can't be judged back then but us who have been brought up in this world while we're being told it's wrong while we're seeing that it's wrong because someone six years old i don't think they're mature enough of course by the age of nine some women are mature they can have their menstruation and everything they can bear children that's considered maturity in many cultures they consider you a woman i don't think nowadays people people that are educated are going to say yes marry my child but people somewhere else that um what can i say the people that still appreciate that tradition it's all about tradition not anything else it's all about tradition there's something else i wanted to add um also like he said sometimes they actually laugh at you if you've got female children and they're not married so why not just give them away to the person that wants to marry them why just keep them for i don't know sometimes people are getting married because sometimes men want women that are not spoiled that haven't tested each and every jim and jack in the world what are your thoughts babe but before i go on my thoughts i wanted to ask a question uh let's say let's take you back to that time you know someone very rich you know you you know this guy is a he's a merchant he's, he's, he's rich maybe he deals with currency at that time and then uh, you have a daughter with you and then the guy approaches you and says you know what i'd like to have a hand in marriage sorry is it a hand in marriage they're asking for her hand yes they're in marriage. asking your hand in marriage for your daughter so and your daughter is like six nine would you accept that i think back in the days it made sense it made sense yeah back in the days not now so would you back in the days yeah if i was thinking like people from back in the days i would say this is security for not only our daughter but us too mm -hmm. so okay. i think i would have now, gravitated towards the same yes thing. a man of god who you know that probably is a prophet oh you've known that he's been doing all this you know good deeds for the lord and everything he comes to you and says i want uh and a marriage for your daughter we just to do the same thing the only title to him is the prophet yeah he's a prophet and everybody knows him everybody really wants to like he's he's he has those good deeds and all this kind of stuff it's just good deeds mm -hmm. they benefit him not anyone else mm -hmm. would you accept that but they're just benefiting him do you understand because mm -hmm. what i the good i do doesn't mean you get blessed with it it's mm -hmm. just me myself a prophet now you're talking mm -hmm. about now a christian prophet yeah it can be a christian prophet it can be um, well, um okay muslim but i don't think they are prophet i mean um yeah just a man of god hmm. his good deeds won't take care of my child though no of course the lord protects him he gets everything he's abad and um he, works. he has the abundance of god he has everything but does in the he, house. Work? he can take care of the your your daughter also he can take care of the child yeah. um i don't know now it it would be up to her if she wants to marry that person then sure but you know i i have asked you these questions to come to a point where I, I i do understand that time that era you know i mean the the, the people who are marrying kids at a young age do you understand but i want to think um is god really uh wanting that to happen you know does he really allow that to marry a child yes that's why i you said know? not just back then in fact let me correct myself mm -hmm. not just back then but even now to you know our homes mm -hmm. as long as you started your menstruation mm -hmm. you're considered a woman so should, and should some we, people start that at night should we really accept that idea in this uh day society that we live people in today? Still do. but 
you know, I'm, 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 I'm really trying to think here. Yeah. I think, okay, maybe it's because I was born, um, I mean, in this era where I find it really weird for a small kid to be given to a man who's old enough. And I don't know how old Muhammad was at that time. But as in today, I mean, for me, I, I, I feel so offended. You're coming to my house and you want my daughter who is only nine years old, you know? Yeah. I'll feel some sort of offended. You know, you you can keep it to yourself. Just monitor my daughter or whatnot until maybe it gets to a certain age, you understand, and until when she can be able to make a decision for herself. But through my guidance, through my, the mother's, my mother's guidance, they will guide her to a way that he can, she can be able to make a decision for herself or maybe decide who she wants to be with, you know. But... Um, who am I to say all these things? Those are the days that people used to do uh, things uh, according to the way the society was set up at that time. You know, yeah. maybe that's why um, today people are waking up to a point where we are not supposed to do that because if you do that, we call that pedophile. You know, if we if we find ourselves. Um, marrying a 12 year old then you're subjected to you even just feel some type of way yourself. you know imagine you're 40 something and you want to marry a 12 years old which I feel for me I feel is so wrong I mean I can't even talk about it because I feel like it's, it's like child what, what, what's that I mean it's just child abuse at some point molestation and then I feel it's not it doesn't settle well with uh even God, the universe, everything around. I don't know. And uh, I'm just thinking to myself, man, if someone comes to me and tells me I want to marry a daughter and she's only nine years old, I'm going to kick you out of the house. I'm just going to tell you, find find, find something to do, to be honest. <laughs> because, I mean, you, you have to think for yourself, like, no. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. You guys, just let us know. What do you think? I know that was that time. But would you do the same thing now? You know, would you allow your daughter to be married to, let's say, uh, maybe one of the elite guys, maybe uh, whatever? Because Muhammad was, was he known at that time? Was he a prophet at that time? Or was he still at the, uh, 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 or was, was being prepared he? to become one? Maybe. Not even sure. I've forgotten mm. the story. But anyway, uh, these are interesting stories that make, makes us really want to think so much. And again, I feel like. Um, we are not here to judge, we are here to just learn and trying to understand uh, what was going on back in the days and we are trying to relate the story to the modern day society oh, yeah. where certain things are not allowed not because but we, you know we, we can't we, condemn something that's yeah. actually happened in the past exactly and again you are not there to actually see what really happened you know, we're just hearing story. Yeah, understand. yeah. We just these are stories that we are we, we are getting to hear, but we we were not there to actually see them. Act, you know, if at least we had like a, a glimpse of, uh, you know, a visualized type of thing, we could have at least said, yeah, you know. But we we don't know to be honest. But again, we we can't say anything because it's written in the in the holy book, so we have to take it the way it is. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was shocked, not really shocked, the other day I figured out that there is a whole chapter that is dedicated to how to treat a woman in the Quran. That has, it actually has more, is it more verses? I don't know if I'm saying it right, has more verses compared to any, Book. yes, Holy no, Book. any, any, any chapter in the Quran. Mm -hmm. And I was you like, read oh. it? I was I was trying to read, but I couldn't find time to just go through all of them. They're like 300 and something. I don't know if I'm correct. Just correct me, guys. But it's like 300 and something. You know, yeah. interesting. But yeah, so those are my views. Those are yours. Let us know about your view on the comment section below. Would you? How do you perceive this information? I know he explained it in a way that uh, he knows best. You know, but uh, in the modern day society. If you ask me now it's frowned upon nope even someone who's 21 is young yeah i mean i don't yeah it is it is young you know the, the, are you sure 
the thing is, it, it's really tough. It's really, it's really tough. Anyway, times time change. Yeah, time, time change. Anyway, maybe back in the days, that was a norm. That was a thing. It's normal. You know, it was like you know, I need the fresh goods, so uh, I really need to catch fresh them goods. when you, you need to catch them when they are young. <laughs> maybe that was the catchphrase. Maybe that was like the the thing. Catch them while they are young. You know, which I mean, it's it's. I don't know. It's good. I mean, I don't know. Anyway, guys, just That's let us know so in the comment section. <laughs> and make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share yeah. with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Please motivate us by giving us stuff to react to. We'll be more than glad to do, it, do them. And we'll see you next time. Deuces.